Hello, it's Scott Manley here. The recent launch of the Dragon to the International Space Station meant that this was the first time in nine years that crew have boarded the station through the docking ports in the US section of the station. And a number of you have asked me why the docking adapters on the US station are laid out the way they are. In particular, why are the pressurised mating adapters designed with this weird offset in the axis that mean the astronauts have to negotiate this dangerous corner which obviously increases the chance of banging your head. So this tunnel is part of a component called the pressurised mating adapter and between one end and the other there is a 28 inch or 71 centimetre offset. The pressurised mating adapter's job is to adapt a pressurised tunnel between two different docking adapters. The space station is an international project which has its roots in the US uh, Space Station Freedom and the Russian Mir-2 station and there are multiple different docking and berthing standards in use between the different segments. The Russian side of the station was docked together using the Soyuz probe and drogue style docking mechanism and there's actually two variants of this used on the Russian segment. There's the old style Soyuz and Progress uh, design which has an outer hard docking ring with eight latches and then there's some newer ones which are called the hybrid design and those have 12 latches and those are used for the larger modules. The international side of the space station is held together by using the large common berthing mechanism adapters and when you see the square hatches on the interior of the station that's when two modules have been bolted together using the CBMs. Now the CBM isn't suitable for free flying docking maneuvers, it requires that one of the modules be grabbed by a manipulator arm and then carefully placed in contact in the right location and slowly mated and bolted together. Larger docking systems actually have problems with thermal expansion, so the process is intentionally slow to make sure that both sides reach equilibrium and line up correctly. And finally, there's the androgynous peripheral attachment system, and that is a Russian-designed docking interface, and it's used between the Russian and international sections of the space station, and the same design is also used to dock the space shuttle to the space station. So the word androgynous is supposed to signify that the design has no differences between either side of the connection, so in theory, any vessels with APAS could dock together. In theory, not so much in practice. And then there's also the newer International Docking System Standard, which is an incompatible evolution of APAS, and that's what Dragon, Starliner, and Orion are using. So, this slanted section that we're talking about is called the Pressurized Mating Adapter. On one side, it connects to the common berthing mechanism, and on the other side, it connects to APAS. There are three of these on the station. Two of them were launched already installed to the Unity module with PMA-1 at the back connecting to the Russian Zarya module and PMA-2 at the front initially being used to dock the space shuttle. As the station was expanded, PMA-2 was moved about to allow new modules to be added and it currently sits on the front of the Harmony module. There is a third pressurised mating adapter which was only used by the shuttle a couple of times and it's actually spent most of its life being used as a storage closet, but it will finally prove its use when the ISS may need to have multiple commercial spacecraft docked to the space station simultaneously. Since PMA-1 is a permanent fixture, it's not just a passageway between the segments, it's actually also used for a lot of storage, with the walls being covered in cargo transfer bags containing generic items like towels, wet wipes and rubber gloves. In preparation for the new commercials crew spacecraft, the two external PMAs were modified with the addition of an international docking adapter, which then converted the APAS standard to the new international docking standard. So now, the question of the unexpected shape of these objects is something I've been trying to find a good answer to for a long time. The main problem is lots of people give answers which don't have any evidence to support it, and truthfully, I still don't really have a good source for my answer. However, I can rule out some bad theories that often turn up on internet. Firstly, it doesn't allow the interior hatch of the APAS to open further. If you watch the DM2 hatch opening video, you'll get lots of angles showing the hatch has been folded back only 90 degrees. It doesn't fold all the way back against the wall because the hinges simply don't allow it. Secondly, 
It doesn't increase the safety margin for the space shuttle by maximizing the distance to the space shuttle's fragile cabin. When the space shuttle was docked, it was actually docked in an orientation that minimized the distance to the cabin. So the most likely truth that it's actually about improving access to the shuttle's payload bay. When the shuttle used the docking system, the docking port was in the payload bay just behind the cabin. And it was off, the offset in the pressurized mating adapter moves the space shuttle backwards a little relative to the station and allows just a little bit more room to access the payload bay. And it also adds a bit more freedom to move the manipulator arm, which has its mounting point really near the docking adapter. So the geometry had been carefully chosen to help give some of the larger components, like the truss segments, get a bit more wiggle room during deployment. Of course, this doesn't make sense for the PMA between the station segments because that would never have a shuttle dock to it. In fact, it also never had a hatch, but since three were being built, it made sense to use a common design. The thing is, the whole design of the docking system for the space station underwent a radical change when Russia started getting involved. The US had been developing space station freedom, and I've seen a few pictures showing the docking mechanism that looks significantly different, and I can't find any references to how that worked. I think it put a lot of the anchoring structure onto the space station so the orbiter didn't continually have to carry it to orbit. And actually, it looks somewhat similar to the docking adapter when it's been taken out of the space shuttle. So what they ended up flying with had most of the structure on the space shuttle with the uh, docking port and the three alignment petals visible. The three-petal design comes from the APAS-89 standard, which was developed by the Soviet Union. They wanted to use it to dock the Buran space shuttle to the Mir space station. The design has a soft capture ring with three metal petals for a soft alignment. The initial capture is made with that ring, which then retracts and pulls the two spacecraft together to make the hard capture happen. And it's actually sort of related to the Apollo Soyuz test project, which they used a standard called APAS 75. And that also had three alignment petals, but the petals were angled outwards, and the capture ring was on the exterior of the pressure system. With APAS 89, the petals um, and the ring moved to the inside. So actually, when you look at Space Station Tour videos, you can see the petals from the docking system inside some of these tunnels. So... Mir had these docking ports in anticipation of Buran, but Buran never made it that far. They did actually develop a Soyuz with compatible hardware, but only one of those was ever flown. It was actually developed because they wanted a way to rescue cosmonauts from Buran if it had some sort of problem that left it unable to return to Earth. So this flew to Mir as Soyuz TM-16 in 1993 and demonstrated the new docking system. The regular Soyuz never switched over to this because the mechanism turned out to be significantly heavier and the switch would have limited the capabilities. And it's worth noting that TMA-16 only launched with two cosmonauts on board, but when it was at Mir, it did pick up a third for return to Earth. So anyway, around the same time, NASA was looking for ways to cooperate and investigated the idea of using Soyuz as a lifeboat for the space station Freedom. And there's a study for this where that's when I see the first renderings of the modern PMA design with that offset. At the same time, the shuttle docking system also switched over to APAS. And this, of course, would enable them to send the space shuttle to Mir. Now, they did remake some designs and revisions to the port. It became a new standard called APAS 95 for 1995. Now, for the original missions, there were concerns about the location of where it would dock, so they actually moved the crystal module, which had the docking port, into a new location to make sure the space shuttle had the correct clearances. But uh, on the third space shuttle mission to visit Mir, STS-74, they brought along a special extension module that would move the docking port further away from the station. This was actually uh, Chris Hadfield's first flight. So this docking adapter basically had APAS ports on both sides, and it was actually made of orbit modules from Soyuz spacecraft with an extra cylindrical section in the middle. They just welded those back to back, and it moved the docking system far enough away from the station that they didn't have to keep moving the crystal module around for the space shuttle. And so the same docking system was used for docking to the International Space Station. Although one noteworthy difference is that the docking system is placed further back in the shuttle bay when 
the they were docking with Mir when they were going to the International Space Station it was moved right up against the back of the cabin and that was because of course they needed access to the payload bay for all the parts that were being delivered to the space station. And so if you think about it, the Buran was in many ways a copy of the Space Shuttle, but in the end the Space Shuttle used the docking system designed for Buran as its docking system. And also that kink in the tunnel that the astronauts have to go through when they're getting out of Dragon or Starliner and risk banging their heads, that is because of legacy decisions for the Space Shuttle, and it'll take more than the occasional bumped head to justify changing out such a large chunk of hardware. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.